Taqwa is a type of inner awareness. It's hard to describe. Is it mental, spirit? It's a type of inner state. And this inner state is a state of awareness about what is pleasing and displeasing to Allah. It's often translated as fear of Allah, but that's not quite... It is, of course, fear is a dimension. And scholars often explain it as taqwa is like a shield that protects you from Allah's punishment. So often the emphasis is on protecting yourself from hellfire, protecting yourself from Allah's punishment, protecting yourself from sin. So a person who has taqwa, whose taqwa, whose level of taqwa is high, they're very aware of things that are going to damage them. They're very aware of what is haram and very aware of keeping away from what is haram. So that's what a person who has taqwa. A person who has taqwa keeps away from what is haram. Maybe they don't even keep away from the haram. They are careful even about things that lead them to the haram. You know, shaking hands with the opposite sex, being alone in the room with a woman, right? Looking at things, hearing things. Maybe these things are themselves are not major sins. But what, why are they prohibited? Because of what they lead to, you see? Right? So maybe a person, to give an example, a person with taqwa not only keeps away from backbiting, if they know there's a group of people who often indulges in backbiting, they won't sit with those people. Because they know this is an avenue that is going to lead me. You see, so as, uh, as um, Umar, he described it, taqwa or Abu Huraira, I don't remember which one. He was asked, what is taqwa? He said, did you ever walk along a path that is covered in thorns? They said, yes. How did you walk? Well, I was very careful to make sure my, you know, the thorns didn't tear my clothes. And he said, this is like taqwa. You see, to be very careful and very cautious.